March we on toward final exam. It's MAP 222 at SUNY Geneseo. This is lesson 36. Uh, we leave infinite series far behind and we take a look in our last few lessons at some other ways to represent plane curves. Uh, for this lesson and the next two, we're going to take a look at parametric curves. So a quick definition to get us going. Let's suppose that x is some function of t and y is some other function of t over some interval of t values. Then, the collection of ordered pairs x, y, so a collection of ordered pairs, some function of t, some other function of t, is a parametric curve. The equations are called parametric equations. T is called the parameter. Uh, what the heck? What the heck is this? Well, you remember when you were a kid and you had to graph like y equals 2x plus 1 and you set up your t-bar chart and you had an x and a y and your teacher said, well, let's graph a few values of x and then bam, 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 and you plotted points. Well, now the parameter is chosen by you, and that parameter determines both the x value, sorry, and the y value. It's the same idea. You have some independent variable, but in this case, there are two variables that are dependent on this independent variable. And that has some advantages for us. Let's stick with familiar for a moment. Let's sketch the parametric curve where x is 2t plus 1 and y is t squared on the interval of t values from negative 3 to 3. Now, just like when you were a kid, we can set up a chart. T values are going to run from negative 3 to 3. We will choose integers because those are, those are the only numbers that exist. The x's are determined by those t's. The y's are determined by those t's. And you can really pause the video if this is going to give you a hard time. Uh, but I think that this is fairly straightforward. So what does that mean? Well, that means here's my, my axes, still the x and y axes that we've always known, except that now we're going to go from negative 5, 9 to negative 3, 4 to negative 1, 1 to 1, 0, sorry, to 3, 1 to 5, 4 to 7, 9. Side note, la, the curve starts here. This is called the initial point, and the curve ends here. This is called the terminal point. The curve starts here, ends here. Sometimes we put an arrow or two on the curve to indicate the direction as t moves from negative 3 to 3. Um, again, we normally think of the parameter as time. It's why our choice is usually t. So we imagine that over time, a particle moves from here to there. That's the basic idea.
Now, you're thinking to yourself, that's a parabola. Well, of course it's a parabola, and we can prove that. I can take that equation and solve for t. Well, what's t? t is x minus 1 over 2. And what have I got? I've got that y is t squared. So y is t squared. Of course it's a parabola. And it's a very familiar parabola. And we're, we can make this thing. So why would I give a rip about parametric curves if parametric curves are just regular American curves? Well... Sketch the parametric curve x equals t squared plus 2, y equals t minus 2 on negative 2 to 2. And as before, you can set up a chart where t values run from negative 2 to 2. Uh, the x's look like this. And the y's look like this. And you end up with a graph, but it's not the graph you thought you'd end up with. 6, 0, 3, negative 1, 2, negative 2, 3, negative 3, Six negative four. Uh, time goes from here to there in this order. And again, this sort of makes sense. Uh, we know that t is y plus two. I should use a different color for emphasis. T is y plus two. So x is t squared plus 2. This is not a function. Because I have it expressed parametrically, I can graph things that are not functions. Which brings me to my calculator. Every calculator has some parametric mode. Um, if you're working with a TI and you hit the mode button on your calculator, funk is highlighted. Funk is highlighted. Um, but there are other options. Even on a TI-84, you've got par for parametric, or pole for polar, or seek for sequence. I'm going to pick parametric. And when you hit the Y equals button in parametric mode, you're allowed to enter an X. Ooh, sorry. Sorry, caps lock. and a y. Now, we're supposed to do this for negative 2 to 2. And I suppose I'll make my t-step something interesting. Uh, this, my TI-84 friends, would have to hit window on. And there would be a t-min, a t-max, and a t-step. And then x-min, x-max, y-min, y-max, as you are familiar. And so when you hit enter, you get this thing. And this is exactly what we thought we would get from here over to there. And you can do a trace on this graph just like you can do a trace on any other graph. Uh, so you can turn back time. If I could turn back time, if I could find a way, I'd take back all the words that have hurt you and you'd stay. And so you can trace the curve and there are all the points on the curve from negative 2 to 2. Which leads me to ask some interesting questions. Like, what if we were to play this game? On an interval of t values from 0 to 2 pi. And let's have, let's have very small t steps. Oh, oh, well, I'm going to take a picture of this because it lasts longer. Let's go to slide here and let's take a picture. Oh, no, that's not what I want. 
That's what I want, what I really, really want. Let's take a look at that bugger. Wow, that's a little bit. Oh, you bugger. And all the folks at home are like, can I fast forward through this part? You are so slow. Right? So this is example three. What in the world? I mean, what in the world? It's a circle! It's almost a circle. It's almost a circle. Uh, it's a circle. It's a circle. Why is it a circle? Well, what do we know about how sine and cosine are related? Well, we know that sine squared t plus cosine squared t is 1. We know that. Well, sine squared t, that's y over 4. And cosine t, that's x over 4. This is the same thing as x squared plus y squared is 16. Circle centered at the origin, radius 4. So now I can definitely graph a wide variety of fun of not functions, of relations that are not functions. Um, incidentally, incidentally, what if we add two to all the x values and subtract one from all the y values? What do you suppose happens in that scenario? Oh, you're going to love it. Isn't that nifty? It does exactly what you think it's going to do. Translates 2 to the right and 1 down. The center is now at 2, negative 1. Radius is still 4. Radius is still 4. We've just moved all the x's by 2 to the right, and all the y's by 1 down. This almost makes sense. So incidentally, I could ask you to graph any circle of any radius with any center, and you have the means to do it parametrically. Um, while I'm on topic, what happens if we do that? That's interesting, isn't it? This is worth a picture. That's worth a picture. Oh, you bugger. Sorry, YouTube world. Didn't mean to get that upset. Right? This is example four. What's the shape, folks? Well, that distance is 4, and that distance is 1. What shape is that that you're familiar with? OK. So how do you do this? How do you parametrize the parabola y equals x minus 3 squared? How do you take something that's in a more traditional form and turn it into something that is parametric? Well, there are a bunch of ways to do this. Some people take the cheapy way out where they just let t be whatever x is. 
where they figure, well, I already have an independent variable in the problem, so I'll just let the independent variable be that, and then y is just, well, x is now t, t minus 3 squared. That's one way. Some folks say, let's let what's in parentheses be the parameter. And so in that case, x is the parameter plus 3, that's not hard, and y is the thing in parentheses squared. So, so you've got that way to go, you've got that way to go, uh, there are many, many other ways to do that. Um, sometimes we don't parametrize curves, we parametrize segments. Parametrize the segment starting at 3, 5 and ending at 6, 9. So you've got a segment, it starts at 3, 5 and it ends at 6, 9, and it looks like this. This is 3, 5, this is 6, 9. So well, what do we do with that? Well, to parametrize, we need a parameter, t, uh, and we need some interval of t values. So what is traditional here is to say that at time equals 0, we're here. Then at time equals 1, we're here. This could be time equals anything, this could be time equals anything, but it is traditionally helpful to choose an interval of t values. 0 to 1 is fairly standard. So here's the thing. As Pete the particle moves from here along the curve to here, the x's, the x's start at 3, and they move somehow such that at 1, when time is 1, the x value is 6. Well, what's the way to do that? The x's have to go up by 3 in a time change of 1. The y values start at 5. The y values have to go up 4 in a time change of 1. And so this parametrizes the line segment for 0 less than or equal to t less than or equal to 1. Uh, incidentally, can you see slope here? Can you see slope there? That's an interesting question. That's a very interesting question. All right? All right. Uh, one more. One more thing before we're done. Uh, and it should be a picture. One more thing to think about. Uh, you should ask me about it when we gather. This is 3 times t minus sine t. And this is 3 times 1 minus cosine t uh, for time from 0 to 6 pi. And you're like, well, that's not very interesting. It'll be more interesting in a moment. Uh, we're going to let the x's go from 0 to 18 pi. And we're going to let the y's go from 0 to 6. That's a very interesting curve. This is a very interesting curve. This curve is called a cycloid. This curve right here. This, uh, three times! Three times! This curve is called a cycloid. When we gather next time, you should ask me about this. You should ask me why this curve is interesting. And that will be part of our in-class time when we gather. Okay, I've come up against 20 minutes. I'm so sorry to have kept you this long, but I wish you well, and I'll see you soon.